everybody. Today is the 10th of May, 2017. And let's start a lecture on the ninth psychological economic crisis happening in China. The title of my description is that global crisis caused by Wall Street financial tsunami and China's counter cycle adjustments. And let's first give you a story. You can look at this one. I added this uh, 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 very important event to the so-called the data that is uh, given by the foreign uh, scholars. When they talk about the, the global crisis in the year of 2008 and 2009, uh, impact very negatively by the Wall Street financial crisis. They talk the, the unemployment. So the most serious unemployment happened in developed economics in EU. Means that including of Canada, United States, and the European area, the five million and the more unemployed people, that is uh, the more serious problem. And then they gave the different now the East Asia, less than the uh, North, uh, North America and the Europe. But indeed, they haven't, uh, they haven't got the information about the real data of the unemployment in China. In the beginning of 2009, there are 25 million as many uh, migrant workers, and 25 million workers laid off in coastal China. And but not calculated in the status book. So my story that started from where they gone, where they are going to. I mean, when you have the crisis to make them lay off, they are out of job. And then twenty-five million is the, must be the must be the the biggest, or even bigger than the total amount of unemployment in the uh, in other countries in the world. Uh, certainly that is uh, not so big, it's smaller, because last time, I mean last uh, lecture, I gave my uh, uh, explanation about the, 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 the late 1990s, uh, the, the eighth uh, psychological crisis happened in China. I said there are almost 45 million SOE, state-owned enterprises workers. I mean the workers are really employed by the state-owned enterprises, they out of job, but not calculated as unemployment uh, uh, worker, unemployment labor. It's because they are, they have another another title that's waiting job, or waiting career, or uh, the trainees and whatever, but never calculated into the statistics book. So most of the foreign scholars cannot even have such kind of information. In the, 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 the new one, in the ninth economic cyclical crisis, the same, the people just have a, the four million of the whole East Asia. Only one country in, I mean, China have a 25 million. So, and let me try to sh short my uh, uh, story. That at that time, just because Chinese governments initiate rural reconstruction movements. That is uh, indeed, is a large amount of the investments invested into the, the infrastructure construction in countryside. I mean, the total amount, I mean, for, for this time, is uh, just uh, the, the 11th five-year plan. Just for this five-year plan, China invested into the rural infrastructure construction for ten tr for for the trading, a, a trading uh, Chinese yuan is almost um, how to say that it's uh, almost half trillion it's dollars or something, but anyway it's big money. So you know that a, a trading invest into the infrastructure constructing countryside can absorb maybe twenty million, maybe less than twenty million labor to have a cash job. So it means that. They at least uh, lay off migrants' labors 
from coastal China flow back to the inland to join the rural infrastructure construction. And then that means the Chinese governments adopt counter cyclical crisis, the measures, the counter measures, the policy to against such kind of global crisis. And then this time they have a very positive outcome. So let's go down to the background analysis. When this time the Wall Street have such kind of financial crisis, that means that the crisis did happen in the core of the capitalism, especially when we talk about the financial capitalist era. Originally, this uh, financial capitalist crisis not taking place in the core. In 1980s and 1990s, this uh, crisis happened in other countries, other areas, but this time it happened in the center of the financial capital capitalism. The financial capitalism center is Wall Street. That is uh, the, the worldwide financial capital center is Wall Street. And then very soon, from 2009 to 2010 to 2011, this, uh, the, the crisis from the center spread to other Western countries. And then to make the whole of these uh, countries around the Mediterranean Sea as a kind of cyclical crisis ring, it's a crisis ring, ring. as a cycle around the uh, Mediterranean uh, uh, Sea. And uh, the, e even the, not, not only the, the, the North Africa, the West Asia, but also the South Europe, almost all the country around this, uh, this sea became very severe crisis. In the South U European countries, they can name such kind of crisis as the budget crisis. It says it's just a, 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 a partially or structural problem. But in North Africa and the West Asia, in these are developing countries, it's re renamed as a kind of political crisis or social, cri social conflicts or whatever. It's a comprehensive crisis. Means that whole of these uh, economic and the social and the political, all of these uh, different sectors all fall into the, the trap of the crisis. So different name, but indeed, when we summarize this time, the crisis, we can find that the world transformation and the comparison, uh, no, I mean the, the world have a very big uh, uh, change because China is the biggest population country and also the biggest industrialized country bring the big overproduction, over capacity of industries, join, merge into the globalization. When the year 2001, at that time I was in John Hopkins, and uh, once a time I have a lecture uh, in John Hopkins University, I asked the, the participants, I said, okay, if China joined WTO, if China merged into the, into the globalization, means what? Means that China bring its big industrial surplus capacity, joined the global overproduction. I mean, originally the global, global, global capitalism has been several times falling into the trap of overproduction. Now it's oversupply of the financial capacity. Now you absorb this a big China inside of the globalization. At that time, it's a, it's a Clinton government. It's a policy is trying to push China into the globalization. 
and then to change China. Okay, I said, uh, but what you can change? Hmm? You, may, you may think about that. It's worse in the situation or better. When they have a, a, a second to think, they, they answer me that must be worse. Sure. The, the capitalist world, they have a, a such kind of post-Cold War ideology, ideology. They do a lot of policies caused by their post-Cold War ideology. They never think that China is a so big, capitalist, industrialized country. And under the same regulation of the capitalist economic regulation, Mm -hmm. So when China joined WTO, means that China bring a big uh, a surplus to join the globalization and then worsen the global situation, economic situation. Surely that will be make the crisis more soon than before. So that is one thing. And then that is because of most of these uh, Western countries has transferred out their industries. Since 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, at least three decades, caused by this, the, 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 uh, uh, the overproduction after the Second World War happened in the 1970s, and then they got to transfer out their big surplus capacity of the industries to other developing countries. And then they upgrade their economy into financial sector. So they, uh, they can enable this one as a financial era. But it also means that they are facing the, the contradiction, the short of the commercial products and the excess of the financial capital. And when China have a large number of the surplus of the, of the commercial goods production, it's just a give a benefits to Western countries. At that time, also China still be in the period of shortage of the financial capital. So this uh, over-supplied financial capital in Western country flow into China. So it's just an exchange, very positive. So strategic positive exchange between West countries in China. So the first decades of the 21st century, it seems it so benefits both. That's a mutual benefits. It's a win-win game in that time. But very soon, when you know that China have a such kind of very special money control system, any sense of the foreign capital flow in China, no matter that it's of foreign uh, uh, trade uh, uh, surplus, or it's a capital account surplus current account surplus or cap capital account surplus all need to against by the Chinese local money. So how much foreign capital flow into China? The same amount of the Chinese local financial, uh, local currency will be issued. So means that against foreign capital flow in, there must be fast increased the local financial capital. I mean, the local, local liquidity, local currency will be in, enlarged more faster. I mean, the more foreign money flow in, the more local money printed out. It means that just uh, 10 years later, or 15 years later, China became a very big local currency country. And when that time, also, Western countries, according to their regulation, according to their post-Cold War ideology, they push China to open the money markets, to open the financial capital markets. It means that you will play the game again. You will have the lesson again. When the, the first decades in the tw 21st century, you make this a big industrial surplus into the globalization. Now you want to make another one that is a big financial surplus merge into the global 
financial capital competition, and then what will happen? Let's see. Now, the, now we just uh, first see what happened when China bring its a uh, large amount of the industrial capacity join the globalization, and then we can see that what, ha what happened. Okay, up to now, fortunately or unfortunately, China still closed door of the financial capital market, not free convertible. Chinese government still control the local money for the local investment and also for local debt markets. So it means that the financial game now play with by the Chinese central governments just inside of China, not make this a big, how to say that, this big money flood or big financial flood, flow, if open the door and then flow to the world, that will be very interesting phenomena happen. Uh, up to now, I said fortunately and unfortunately, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. Let's wait. Mm -hmm. So when we see that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the first decades passed, and then second decades of the 21st century coming to us, we, f we found that the, the, the first decades, they can have a mutual benefits. And then the second decades turn to the, to the maybe lose-lose game. But anyway, the re strategic relation in the first decades is much uh, better. And uh, they all think that they have, a, they have a benefits. But the second decades, no. They have a. They have. They have to encounter, to have a contradiction, and uh, so such kind of problems turn into the strategic policies, and then you can see that this world will have a, a lot of new uh, contradictions, and uh, after the this uh, 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 economic crisis, 2008, 2009, and 2010. It's a three years uh, global crisis. The world have a new structure. Means that China became first the biggest industrial country, second the biggest financial capital country. Originally, United States. It's the biggest financial capital country. But now, the financial capital, the total amount, calculated into dollar, China up then United States. So it means that China gained the top position. But United States still be the strongest financial capital country in their power. I hope you can think about that. Even you have a big number, but this number is not strong. It's soft. What is the hard power? The hard power not just uh, according to how much number you have, because financial capital is a number. It's not real assets. It's not physical properties. Financial capital it's a kind of intangible assets. You cannot see. What you can see? Military power, political power. So which one, I mean, which one has big number? Not important. Also not means that you are strong. So the strong means that the strong political power and the military power. That is the United States. So once a time, um, or many times, I try to make you understand what is my key arguments. The financial capital only empowered by political power. Let me just uh, stop here for several seconds. You think about this arguments. 
So I said, after this crisis, even China became the, the big number country, the top one, but just in number. So we, we can see that industrial capacity, China is number one. But financial capacity, even you have a big number, but you're not a strong country. The strongest, the strongest country still be United States. So when China has such kind of position, China trying to talk about this uh, new structure to say that we need to build up the new style big countries relationship. The few Western country recognize or acknowledge China have the number, the top one country with the financial capital number. Financial capital is a, is a kind of concept, not, uh, uh, per, not performed, not implemented by the number, but implemented or practiced by the power. So China is not so powerful country in the world. So that is the very complicated situation. Nowadays, the Irish people need to understand. And then we will give you the explanation about the different, different measures when uh, China and the United States both facing the challenge of the crisis. Because you, you may have such kind of information that the year 2007, almost at the same time, China and United States all have the crisis. The crisis in the United States is that the, the bad loan of the, of the, of the a mortgage house is a, a turn to the, the financial uh, turmoil. But in China, in 2007, there's a, the, the stock markets have a big disaster. And several days, just, there are almost 20 trillion, it's a equal $3 trillion vanished, steam out. That is a big loss. And then, when United States have the Wall Street financial crisis, it's very soon to impact the, the whole of the world, including of China. So after the 27th, three, may, three trillion dollars vanished by stock uh, uh, markets down, uh, downgrade, fallen down. That is a very fast fall down. And then there's a more, even more worse, that's bad impact from Wall Street financial crisis impact China. So that's China and the United States both adopt similar measures. United States announced that $4 trillion for saving the, 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 the market, for rescue the, 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 the economy. Same in China. The government announced four trillion Chinese yuan. It's almost one sixth or one seventh as a American money for rescue the economy. And then what will happen after such kind of similar crisis and similar measures? Few people carried out the studies to compare uh, the two countries. Similar crisis, similar measures, and then different outcome. Here, I'm giving, I'm trying to give the analysis. In China, even they have a big loss, and then they, they got to close down 60,000 enterprises in coastal China, because that the world, the global crisis, means that the, 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 the overseas demand large decreased. And then coastal China is mainly for exports. So these are coastal China's factories closed down or bankrupted. And then 25 million workers lay off. It's a big crisis happened, but it's happened in coastal China, not in the whole China, because at that time, 
China is just trying to accelerate the rural construction by the government's investments. That is just a in, that is a counter cyclical crisis measure. So means that coastal crisis saved not by coastal area, but by inland construction, especially by rural construction. And then rural construction absorbed these uh, layoff workers, come back to their inland provinces. So very soon they solved the problem. And but one thing is also important. I need to tell you. It's because large investments invested into rural China, mainly for the road construction, the electricity network construction, the pipe waters, and the, the, the telephone and the communications, and whatever, all are infrastructure construction. Also including of this, uh, this uh, to tear the land and whatever. So it means that almost all of this uh, countryside, even in the mountain areas, much improved their infrastructure construction. Their infrastructure construction improved means that they can more easy to enjoy these uh, modern commercial goods like automobile, color TV, washing machine, and the refrigerators. So when these uh, coastal uh, manufacturing cannot export these uh, commercial goods, and then Chinese governments gave a very special policy to announce to all the rural people, you are the consumer. If you reject it as a rural household's registration, you can have a 13% 13, 13 discount to buy any commercial goods that cannot export in the coastal China. It means that to enlarge the local demand, to replace the decrease of foreign demand. Originally, Chinese central governments gave a 13% not discount, gave a 13% uh, 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 how to say that? 13% of the short taxation means that uh, low taxation, 13% low tax, ta tax, low tax for all of these uh, factories if you export, means that Chinese government subsidize the foreign consumer. Or consumer or subsidize this uh, this uh, this company in other countries. Now they subsidize the local people, especially the rural people, and then they also tell this uh, local consumer that this policy benefits you, but the, the ended will be ended at the at the the thirty first December of twenty ten. Just to give you this, this policy for one and a half year. Immediately steam up, s s s not stirred up, but uh, make up a lot of local buyers to buy the automobile and buy the color TV and whatever. So just a one uh, a quarter economic the GDP decreased and then the second quarter is increased. So that is a V, very typical V. Uh -huh. One quarter downgrade and then second quarter upgrade. So that is a Chinese measures to deal with the global crisis and then to maintain the high growth, high GDP growth, even in 2008 and 2009. So if you calculate these are five years because Chinese calculated this five year plan. So these are five years. The GDP growth maintained 9%. It's the highest in the world. So that is why I think that we need to compare the, the, when they have the similar pro problem of the crisis and also have the similar measures. And American the measures, the, the total amount much bigger, six times at least bigger than the Chinese central government's uh, 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 money for secure the econo economy. So finally, you can find a different outcome. China can stabilize, stabilize their, uh, their economy and then also gain the high increment of the GDP. And the United States turn off, not turn off, they transfer out a large number, more than 60% 60, 60 of their 
money secure the economy flow to the future markets and the, the, the circulation markets to strengthen these uh, financial investments and then to have a more, uh, uh, how to say that, more uh, 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 unstable uh, 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 change in these uh, financial sectors. And also to make very big change in the future markets, especially the green and the raw materials and the oil. The, if, you, if you read the, the data of the oil since the 2008-2009, when Americans adopt the policy in name of QE and quantum easing as a skill, securing the, the economic uh, crisis, the oil price goes very high. And then to make these uh, developing countries import oil, import raw materials, or import grain, all have the trouble of import inflation. I mean, the inflation is not created by themselves, created by Wall Street. And then when American governments adopt the, the, the policy to secure the Wall Street, the Wall Street take these, uh, these investments, the investors, take large number of money and then invest into the future markets to make future markets price goes much, much, much high. And that means that uh, turn this uh, inflation to other countries. It's very typical, mean, very typical phenomena to show that this uh, top leader country, this uh, big power country, did have or do have or does have the power to transfer out their cost, their institutional cost, to others. So that is different. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we have such kind of comparison, we can know that they got, they, this, uh, why that American, the, even they, are, they, they, they control the big power, but they cannot change, they cannot make change. Yes, the prediction announced, we can make change. Also that we believe they they want to change, to change this bubble economy back to the physical economy. That is the right way. But when they're facing the, the crisis, they got to follow. Hmm? Follow this uh, so-called market system. Follow this, uh, this uh, the, because the main, the main uh, factor m m of the American e economy if you calculate the GDP, you may know that the main factor is the financial sector. The financial and the service is 87% of total GDP in the United States. So if you are the leader, you are the politician in the United States, when you have a crisis, which one you save? 1387 is the biggest. And the, the real production, just less than 13%. Agriculture is less than 1.7%. And the industries, 11% or something. Very little. So if you, you, you got to do something, certainly you need to, to save this big one, big one 87. That is a structure, economic structure, made the policies turn to the, gave the big, big interest, give the big benefits to the big one. This big one is financial sector. So that is why Americans cannot change. But in that time, the same time, it's a physical production in China still be, uh, you know, it's uh, more than 50. The industry is 46%. And the agriculture is 11%. So that's, you think about the whole of these uh, the, 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 the physical production means that agriculture plus the industries still be more than 50. So that's certainly Chinese trying to save the big one. The big one is a physical, physical economy, not the uh, service. So the service at that time is uh, 47 something. So the, the, it means uh, 53 is uh, 
It's a real production. It's a real. Uh, it's a physical production. So this difference. So it's a. A lot of people criticize. I said it's a. If you cannot change the American GDP structure. Whatever you criticize, useless. So you need to and you need to wait, wait the American aware, what they should do, and then if they try to do something, and maybe you can give some help. But up to now, it's a the more modernized economy, the more troubled by modernization. So. When we give this uh, the the first page description, we may have these uh, data to show that what what happened in the United States in the year 2007, 2008, is because of the the, the private debts, the private debts mainly from the housing, so the leverage became much high, and then leading up to the crisis. This is the data and the pictures, and then also the budget trouble. American have uh, paid too much. Uh, uh, for uh, the, the military expense and, and also the social expense and the government's expense, so they have a big uh, uh, deficit. The deficits at that time in the, in the uh, crisis became large. And then if they cannot enable this one, the first they, they said uh, this one is a tax stock bubble, and this one is that the U.S. housing bubble. It's because of bubble break, and then they have a crisis. They are very clear to name these are two bubble. These are two crises. But this time, they cannot. We will give this analysis in the tenth cyclo crisis analysis. Not this time, but I'm trying to give it a title. This one is comprehensive. Not only tech, or the housing, or the financial, it's a comprehensive bubble. Everything is bubble now. Okay, so it's a very tough job for the new president. And uh, when we see that this uh, this uh, data sh also shows that 2007, 2009, to 2008, 2009, that it's a recession. These are three years. It's a very uh, uh, is severe of the crisis. Here, these uh, data also shows that. Uh, very difficult time in in United States. So when we see that it's the only one competitive advantage, is American still be the 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 world uh, the uh, world trade uh, that is a, uh, the hardest currency still be the American dollar. Even it's a downgrade. I mean the value of our, of dollar decreased, but American dollar U.S. dollar still be the the global reserve currency. And so every country want to want to buy the commercial goods or buy raw materials, buy oil, whatever. You need to pay U.S. dollars, so you need to take dollars. So that is why American uh, can can be the the, the so-called strongest financial capital country. That's, that is uh, the that is the reason. And then when the American governments adopt a measure to secure. Wall Street, Wall Street only can contain 300 million, uh, 300 thousand, as a has have a job. I mean the, the the job is smaller in Wall Street. A large number of people, they cannot benefit from the government's policy, so they became poor. So when the the crisis happened in the year 2008, the people have no have hunger increased. From nine percent to nineteen percent, and so that is uh, why they joined the Occupy movements, trying to occupy the Wall Street. So that is these are uh, the 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 sheets written by these uh, participants. They wrote down why they joined the Occupy movements. It's because they have a children, they are they out of job, and they also uh, uh, wandering in the street. So, jobless, securityless, and many people are just hopeless. So this is because of the the, the government's policy only secure the Wall Street, this this uh, the big big financial capital uh, group. 
So a large number of the common people, they, are, they, they, they have no uh, uh, hope, so they go to the street. That is why from the, the year 2008, many Western countries, uh, in name of the uh, social welfare country, but people lost too much. And so that is uh, uneven and uh, make the, 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 the street conflicts increased. And here is uh, to show that the American uh, uh, QE policy. And from the, the 2008 to 2009, to make American uh, GDP uh, also as a V, decreased and increased, also as a typical V. This V means financial capital increment. It's because large number of the liquidity flow into the speculation uh, markets, and then means that these uh, institutional investors did have the, the, the room to keep their financial uh, growth again, uh, grow up again. So that is uh, why they can also have a V uh, 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 GDP. But most of them flow into the uh, raw materials and oil markets, and then to, to change the, the future market's price. That is how I just gave the explanation in the first page. And then the American crisis in Wall Street turned to the uh, 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 big death crisis in Europe. Most of these European countries have no legal position because Maastricht Treaty, Maastricht Treaty gave the very, uh, 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 very strict uh, bottom line that the budget deficit must not be uh, upper uh, increased to 3% of the total GDP. But most of them, you can look at these countries, all break the bottom line, except Finland and the Rosenberg. So Germany, Austria, Malta, Italy, Dutch, Slovenia, Berlin, Cyprus, and, uh, and the Slovak, uh, France, Portuguese, Spain, Greece, Ireland. So the, 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 the European in average is at 6.3. In, in just because of the, the, the crisis happened in the world, so almost all of these, uh, these uh, EU countries break the bottom line to be illegal. So to make EU become a kind of illegal international organization is because of the, the, the deficit. So the, the death crisis happened in the whole of the West countries. And then they got to reduce the government's investments for secure the uh, uh, crisis. But the, 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 the less government's investments, the more severe of the economic crisis. So Europeans fall, in fall into the trap. And uh, here is a, also shows that from December, uh, from, uh, uh, December 2008 until the January 2012, uh, one by another, they have a such kind of very big number of the government's deficit. So the, the death crisis became more and more severe in the Western countries. So that's a, uh, these are countries all decreased their demand. So the overseas, I mean the global demand, the overseas demand for all of these industrial countries uh, is a bad impact. And also because of inflation. So these are real production country, I mean physical production countries, all facing the double challenge. One is that they got to import the inflation. Second, that they cannot ex export. So that is why even originally they, they, they are trying to uh, uh, give a, a new title of this uh, emerging country, like China, India, and, and uh, Brazil, and uh, so on and so. They said it's a, there is a kind of BRICS. But 
caused by such kind of double problems. Almost all the BRICS, except China, decreased or fall, even fallen into the, the crisis. So here, as I said, the regional conflicts caused by the cost transferring. The Western countries, the only one comparative advantage in Western countries is that they can transfer out their uh, uh, institutional cost to developing countries. So here is EDEP, here is China. There are so many local conflicts caused by the global crisis. And I said a double, double problem. One that is they got to input inflation. They got to input, like Egypt, input the uh, wheat and wheat powder. And uh, more than 50% of the Egyptian uh, wheat consumption rely on the foreign market the international market. So when the wheat price increased 100%, doubled, means that the poor people in Egypt need to pay double price to buy the, the, the how to say this, naan or some steamed bread or bread, or anyway, that's they buy the bread. But this one, the price increased much high. So these are poor people cannot tolerate such kind of food inflation. So they go to the street or go to the square. So any foreign aid can give them or give their children, their wife, their old people, give them bread and ask them to go to, go to the square. No doubt they will go. A similar situation in any North African country. Because all the North African countries, the, the, the food mainly rely on the import wheat. That is uh, caused by the colonization. Few people can do the analysis about this uh, difficulties. What is the root reason of the difficulty? Originally, here is uh, multi-crops. But by the colonization, they all change into the wheat production. But wheat production here cannot supply cannot have a self, uh, uh, so this, a self supply or something, it means uh, to satisfy the local people's needs. And also by the post-colonization, they got to change their pr production into the, uh, uh, the these, uh, these, uh, these uh, so-called cash crops for the world markets. Like Egypt, originally they can, they can, they can produce a lot of wheat. But later, they produce a lot of cotton for the world markets. And then cotton occupied a number of the land. So the wheat production reduced. And then when the wheat increased, they cannot have a self-supply. So that is uh, why many poor people going to uh, go to the, 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 the square, it's, uh, the square of liberalism and then join the campaign. So, and then there's a social conflicts. Here is uh, in China, that's because of these uh, coastal areas, a lot of factory closed down. And the overseas demand large decreased. So many people lay off. So there's also the conflicts happen. So this uh, developing countries, the physical production, they take too much institutional cost from the overseas. And then when we have the crisis, we need to talk about how the Chinese governments uh, uh, facing the challenge of the crisis and how they adopted measures to deal with the crisis. And uh, uh, the first, we, we should know that the foreign capital invest into China, that is uh, to make China have a large number of FDI. Started from 2001, 2002, 2003, it's because of the uh, high-tech bubble break in the United States. I, last lecture, I have given the explanation about this phenomenon. I said it's, uh, the East Asian financial turmoil was caused by 
the capital flow out of this East Asian industrialized country, when they need capital invested, they, they need capital investments, but capital flow out to follow the bubble of the IT industrialization in the United States. So IT absorbed large number of the capital from overseas, and then to make IT become a bubble. So from 1995 to 2001, these are five or six years, large number of the capital flow in, and then finally became a bubble and then break. That is a five to six years. That is a, the reason of the East Asian financial turmoil. And then I said, when China have a large number of FDI, foreign direct investments from the year 2001 to 2002, and not because of China access WTO, not because of the globalization, it's because the crisis happened in IT in the United States. To make, to push this uh, too much intensive capital in the IT industries out of the United States, because the crisis, there's no benefit, no interest. So they got to flow out. Where is their interest? China. Because China has been in last crisis. China started the infrastructure construction, mainly for infrastructure, mainly for highway, for airport, and for the fast speed uh, trains and whatever. So all of this construction to give a very good base for absorb this foreign capital flow in. So that is why from the beginning of the 21st century, the first decades, large number of foreign capital flow in China. So and then they occupied a lot of benefit, ben, benefit industries. So if you calculate these, uh, these uh, industries, you can have a three, uh, about, uh, no, 30 main industrial streams or main industrial sectors, two of third, two third of the industries in China, mainly controlled by foreign capital. Mm. Means that more than 50%. Understand me? That means that, yeah, foreign capital investing in China for what? For take this uh, benefits industries. When these are benefit industries cannot benefit it, they will flow out. So it doesn't mean they, 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 they will settle. No. When they can have the interest, they will be here, the foreign capital. When there is another country or another area have a more interest, they will flow to others. So, but in the first decades of the 21st century, it's, uh, China at that time is the top one country of FDI. Means that the FDI more like to invest into China. So that is uh, the first we need to know that when the crisis happened, what is the, back, what the background in China. So foreign capital flow into China, that is uh, uh, very important and then to make China, coastal China, to be the big workshop for overseas needs, not for domestic needs, it's mainly for overseas demand. So and then it's because of this for overseas demand can have benefits. So make almost all the coastal China, originally only Guangdong, or a part of Fujian, southern Fujian, and southern Zhejiang, that is for overseas demand. But when this one, especially lead by foreign capital, and then foreign capital much, much welcomed by the local governments, and then North Zhejiang and the Jiangsu and the Shandong and Liaoning, almost all the coastal China, taken by foreign capital. That is the situation. Maybe sh short term, you can have a benefit. And also the local governments enjoy the profit. 
their budget can be increased, and then be, they can consume too much, but it's short term. When the crisis happens, there will be another phenomenon. So that's one I said, is uh, the, to make the coastal China econo e economy change the structure, not working for the local demand, but only for overseas demand. And then the other one I also have talked, that is uh, no matter how many foreign capital flow in, immediately turn to the local money. I mean, against the foreign capital, Chinese issue the, the local currencies. So the, the local financial capital enlarged and then became a kind of independent power. It's also a very interesting phenomenon. And uh, I hope all the audience here can pay attention to such kind of big number of the financial capital grow up in China. It's a very new phenomenon. And a large number of the liquidity flow into the private sectors. And the private sectors mainly use this uh, big liquidity to invest into the speculation market. And then to make the, the stock market and the future markets and the real estate markets uh, have a big wave, big change. It uh, not, cannot be uh, settled. And then another thing was also very important, th this one. The state-owned enterprises, I mean the state capital. Uh, you may say that the state capitalist capital, but anyway, it's a capital controlled by state. Much, much enlarged. Caused by large amount of the infrastructure, infrastructure construction investments. The infrastructure construction mainly carried out by state-owned enterprises because private wouldn't like to carry out such kind of program because there's no short-term return. So the only big state-owned enterprises have to do it because that is the order from the central government. And when they do it, they have a large amount of loan given by the state bank. So the state enterprises and state bank bundled together. So large number of the bank assets controlled by state enterprises. And then these are state enterprises put, invest into the, the, the big program and let this airport and the, and the trains and whatever, all the physical assets. They, these are assets. These are not short-term return. Maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. So it means that the bank assets now became a long-term investments, cannot have short-term interest. So the bank need, the central bank gave more liquidity. That is why the financial capital grew up. The number became larger and larger. So it means that, yes, you gain the game. You win the game when you're facing the challenge of the global crisis. I just gave the comparison. Yes, Western countries also need to adopt some measures. Chinese governments as a rental country also take some measures. They both take measures to deal with the crisis. One failed, another seems win the game, but also have a big cost, hmm. also have a big loss, but not being calculated. So that is why I said, no matter what kind of political regime, no matter what kind of ideology, what ism, what zations, remember, in the practical level, if you talk about a practical issue, you need to do very careful analysis to know which measures you take, and then what is the outcome of such kind of measures. Maybe positive, maybe negative. Whatever you take as a return, whatever you need to pay as a cost. Nothing can be only have a return. You need to pay the, talk, the cost. So that is a, that's one I need you understand. Okay, we can have a 10 minutes break. Uh -huh.
and then we go to the next page. 